Hey, Mitch, what I hear in the zeitgeist is a legitimate fear of the variant, but in every conversation, the variant is over there. The variant is in Australia. The variant is in some selected part of Africa. Is the dreaded variant in America? There are multiple different variants circulating in the United States, but what makes it different when there's a variant here versus in India or in Africa or Brazil or, or, or even uh, or even Japan is the fact that we've got so much of our high-risk population vaccinated that these cases of the variant don't necessarily translate into hospitals going into crisis. And that's why we prioritize the vaccine to those individuals who are most likely to be hospitalized. And when you look at the vaccines, even if variants might be problematic for symptomatic infection, meaning some people can get infected even if they've been fully vaccinated, like with the South African 1351 variant, <clears throat> the, when it comes to what matters, severe disease, hospitalization, mm -hmm. and death, the vaccines are extremely are extremely good. And, and you have to remember, that's what the vaccines are meant to do. It's not meant to drive COVID to zero. That's not going to happen. What we're trying to do is remove the ability of COVID to cause a public health crisis. Right. And the vaccines do that. Another thing in the zeitgeist, Dr. Adelja, and I would suggest this is in your global wheelhouse. I think of Albert Coe at Yale University as well. Does good nutrition protect us from a worse outcome from COVID? The fact that we are well nutritioned compared to other poor countries, does that matter? It does matter in certain aspects. If people have nutrient deficiencies, if people are vitamin D deficient, they're more likely to get COVID. They're more likely to have a severe case of COVID-19. But I would argue, you know, even though in the United States we might be we might look good in terms of nutrition. We have a different part, a part of malnutrition. We have an obesity crisis in the United States. And I think the fact that most Americans are overweight really did synergize with COVID-19 and, and get a lot of people sicker than they needed to be if we weren't so, such an overweight, obese country. So yes, I think it's important to have proper nutrition, but you can also kind of be over nutrition and, and have obesity on the other end, which can put your country into, into a problem too when it comes to respiratory infections like COVID. Dr. Adalja, we're at a place where a lot of people, particularly in the United States, are able to get vaccinated if they so choose. What's the latest science in terms of wearing a mask, not wearing a mask? What's appropriate? for somebody who's been vaccinated and what risk they pose to others in terms of transmitting the virus. So if you're a fully vaccinated person, you can basically go back to your pre-pandemic life. Breakthrough infections are extremely rare, meaning someone who's fully vaccinated. It's something that happens, you know, 0.000 percent of the time. And when it does happen, most of those cases are clinically insignificant, meaning they have no symptoms and they're not associated with transmissibility. So I think if you're fully vaccinated, go back to your life. You don't necessarily need to wear a mask. There are some caveats for those who are immunosuppressed. So I would talk to your physician if you are somebody who's had an organ transplant or is getting <clears throat> chemotherapy about what precautions to take. So you yeah. as a vaccinated person aren't a threat to others. That's the important thing to remember. And others aren't a threat to you.